Hi, on this week's episode of the Tony Soto Show, it's me, Meatball. I'm taking over while she's writing. We get into some weird stuff. I did some, I tried to do my best to stay like Tony and I got very high, but we talked about me selling my car. My dad would have gotten on the submersible, my wicked IBS and how I'm going to solve it. And I take you at the end of this podcast on a guided meditation. So um, let me know if you love it or hate it. Goodbye. Tony Soto Show. It's uh, me. It's Meatball. Hello. It's me, Meatball. Um, what are we doing here? I know what you're asking yourself. Why? I came to listen to Tony Soto. I thought she said that she was going to leave and the podcast was over. But I, as a professional podcasteress, could not dare to see an RSS feed, as they're called, go unspoken on. No words? Okay, I'm, I know I'm screaming. I know I'm peeking. I know that that isn't the audio that you're used to with the, with the Tony Soto show. Yeah, okay. Hi, everyone. It's me, Meatball. Let me start over. <laughs> See, I can't shut up. Let me start over. Hi, it's me, Meatball. Um, Tony Soto is going to be writing a one-woman show and focusing a lot of their energy on the creative work that goes into that. And I really appreciate that because they really do need to focus on something. I'm worried about her. I mean, after working with her for the pageant and seeing how hard she works, I... I really do appreciate Tony so much more now. And the amount of effort that it takes for them to do stuff is incredible. And they really do put their 100% all. I know it sounds like, I know you can't tell if I'm reading her or complimenting her. <laughs> it was all comp. It was supposed to be compliments. That all being said... While Tony is away writing their um, Tony Award winning, Pulitzer Prize winning, Peabody Award winning one woman show. And it's apparently going to be sold out at the Hollywood Bowl. While she's creating this iconic performance piece, I will be taking over the podcast and talking about whatever I want to talk about. The reason I did this was because I was listening. You know I love listening to the Tony Soto show. I've listened to every single episode. I've been with it through every iteration. When I started listening regularly, unfortunately, it was after Shea kool had already left. Um, and it was Rachel and Sweaty Balls. What Was that their name? Sweaty Balls? And then I liked hearing the fallout of that because it it, it it was so crazy when that happened. It was like, did does Tony hate women? And you know what? The answer is we still don't fucking know. I don't think we'll ever know, you know? With Tony, it's hard to tell what he does and doesn't like. Frankly, I don't know if he likes me. I remember the first time I met Tony Soto. The first time that Tony Soto made themselves memorable to me was when they had a show called Learn the Words, Bitch, at Akbar, But it was a long time ago, back when it was in the front room. I was a baby drag queen. God, was this like eight years ago? Nine years ago? Must have only been five. Truly can't remember. I don't... Here, listen. Here's the thing about me. My name is Meatball. Um, and I drink alcohol at such a degree that I think I might be dying from it. But we're going to get to that in the second portion of, portion of this show when I talk to you about what's going on in my daily life. But back to my memory about Tony Soto. My first time meeting Tony Soto was at Akbar. I was there competing with my dear friend Pickle in Learn the Words, Bitch. And everyone told me that I should do a slow ballad instead of like a high-energy number. I realize now... Thinking back, I think that Pickle was sabotaging me so that she could win that bottle of liquor, which is wild that that was the only prize for that show, is a singular bottle of liquor. I hope that they get money now. Yeah, I lost. I think I did a Tina Turner song or a Whitney Houston song, Slow Ballad. I Now, thinking back, the judges were very kind to me for doing what I did. And we can't all be winners. I This brings up, before I wrote down a thing. Now I know how Tony does this. I love to just talk, and I'm just shooting the shit. Now I do realize that we're only three minutes in, and I feel like it was about ten minutes in. So maybe I'm wrong. But what I was going to say was, 
I I love a queen that's willing to admit that there's room for improvement. I love or just anybody, anybody who's able to like look at themselves and say, you know what? That wasn't my best and I'll do better next time. You don't have to be hard on yourself. But I don't like. Let's make this about queens. Well, let's make it about me. I recently was, uh, like last year, shot a short film for Disney. I am in maybe three, four, five minutes of it. It's a 20-minute film. It's wonderful. It's very cute. I, it's for um, a show called Launchpad where they shoot like four or five different shorts, all funded by Disney, but they bring together directors and writers and everybody is, I, generally everybody on my, that was in the film that I was a part of was a person of color. I finally got to go see it. It premiered um, two weeks ago, I think, in New York at a film festival. So anyway, Disney is shopping around this thing for awards. It's going to be coming out on Disney Plus and on Apple TV, I believe, um, later this summer. Anyway, back to what I was saying about needing to be better. Just, you know, I've been I've watched myself act for a very long time and I feel like as an actor watching myself, I have never thought I slayed in my life. Whether or not other people have thought that and told me that or believed it or I got the role because I slayed the audition. Like, whatever it is, I have never looked at a piece of work, a lip sync that I've done, a painting that I've made, a dress that I've made. I have never looked at anything that I've done and ever thought to myself, great, can't get any fucking better than that. Like, but there's so many drag que- about the movie. I watched it. Um, I thought think I did a good job. I was funny. The It was a full movie theater. People were laughing. Um, I was like, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do this? And then, you know, you play in your head all the scenarios that day where you were like, well, that take was this take. And, you know, the, uh, the third take, you said this line better, but it's clear that they were trying to capture this angle. So they had to use this take. And it's just like, uh, it's all those things. Anyway enough ranting about myself, what I was going to say was I was in a dressing room recently and I was talking to this drag queen and I just slowly brought up, hey, do you remember like forever ago when you first started drag and like our mixes were a little too long and like we weren't good enough to hold the attention and they cut me off before I could even finish and quickly just said, no, baby, uh uh-uh, no, my numbers were never too long. I was always good. And I was like, oh, you don't think that there was ever any room for improvement to like, uh, like rework a mix or like add something. And she's like, no, baby, once my mixes is done, it's good. And I'm perfect. And I can fill every second of it. I, I It's just, I, I mean, I guess that's the story. I guess I've kind of, hmm, how does Tony do this? This is very hard without someone to bounce off of. Um, I guess that's it. That's what I'm saying is like, are you the type of person that tries to seek improvement in everything you do? Or are you a type of person that's able to look at a project that you've done and just go slate it and just move on? Okay, this is I I don't know how she does this. I'm going to take a break and I will be right back. Ooh, see, now I can say, honestly, critically, that was bad. We'll be right back. Tony Soto Show. And we're back. (laughs) Y'all, it's summertime in Los Angeles. The boys are throwing parties. I mean, if you're out here and you're looking for something to do, I'm telling you, you got to come to Fat Slut on July 21st. If you're in San Francisco, Fat Slut, August 4th. Also, if you're in San Francisco, Reparations, July 14th. Also, if you're in San Diego, Susia Sundays, uh, I'll be there on July 16th. Uh, July 9th, me and Tony will be hosting... A box stars together. I know these dates are completely out of order. They're in the order that I got booked to do them in. That's how I remember. Um, 
Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? I think those are the only my only dates for July. We're keeping it light and hunty, honey, because it's my birthday month. I'm not one of those people that's a big, it's my birthday month, it's my birthday week, it's my birthday eve, it's my birthday, it's my birthday afters. Like, I don't do that. Uh, the most I do, because I have fat slut now, I'll do a birthday themed fat slut. For the most part, I've only ever done birthday dinners. Maybe rented a house in the Palm Springs and invited friends. I think I'm not going to do that this year. I think I'm a little over that vibe. It's just so it's hard to get everybody out there. Everyone's got to find a ride. And then the noises have to turn off at 10 p.m. or 8 p.m. Like, Palm Springs is not for parties anymore. They are really trying to get that out of there. It's for old people. It's for fags. And it's for them to be quiet at 9 p.m. Um, So... Generally, I'm just like, uh, I want to just hang out, smoke weed on my birthday. But this year, I'm doing a big, I'm taking a big adult step, everybody. My finances are finally in order. I, uh, for someone who came from rich parents, I'm so bad with money. And that's probably why. But I'm good now, and I'm finally officially able to buy a car again. Um, there's truly, absolutely nothing wrong with my car. It's a wonderful car. A Ford Focus Titanium, 2015. Some minor cosmetic damage. No bumps, no scratches, no scrapes, no dents. But um, one of my tires did explode and fuck up the front fender. Uh, if anyone's in the, in the market for a, a car, an automatic, runs great i would keep it for another five years if i could but frankly my party be busting my party be popping and i need to get an suv because i'm an old fat man and i cannot fit in my tiny car anymore um so that's that that's what oh why did i say all that because i'm gonna buy myself a new car for my birthday it feels so adult and so i think that that's all i'm gonna focus on i think i'm not gonna do a birthday party i think i'm gonna conserve all of my fucking money and spend every last podcasting dime i get from this episode here at the tony soto show oh oh this is free i think People that are super birthday y and want you to spend every single day of the month with them or use it as an excuse to be like just absolutely unhinged. I got some news for you, people. Mama, you can act like that any time of the year. Why save it for just one month? If that is who you are at your truest self, at your absolute core, if you're the type of person who needs constant attention and needs to make every night about yourself, you can do that any time of the year. All you have to do is just tell your friends that you're going out for a theme night. Say, hey, I'm organizing this theme night. We're all going to get dressed up and then just go on a bar crawl. Your friends will probably go with you. You don't need to, to guilt them. In, uh, but see, they know you. They're not going to do it for any other reason but your birthday. I feel like birthdays are the because I don't do Christmas holidays. I'm not a big fan of birthdays are truly the only time that people can get me to do stuff for them. And I will not question it. You want to go to a bouncy castle? Sure, I'll pop it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, a uh, what are those big bounce houses? You, it's like a warehouse, and it's filled with bouncy castles and trampolines. Got invited to one of those. Mama, oh, I'm, I'm fucking almost 300 pounds. I, like, had to do the math really quick, and I was like, am I almost? What is almost? Like, is, t is 265 almost? Are we going to round up? Because I could say I'm I'm just over 250 pounds. Is, is, I'm closer to 250 than I am to 300. These are just honest questions that I'm asking you. Am I fat? Yes. How fat? That's on you to decide. Yeah, I'll do anything on someone's birthday. I went and saw a play one time for someone's birthday. 
outdoors in the summer. I went to the Ren Fair. If there's one thing you know about me, it's I don't like seeing people dressed up like idiots unless they're my friends and it's drag queens. And also, let's talk Ren Fair. The turkey legs, they're kind of gross. They're kind of gross. What you want is it to taste kind of like an oversized Popeye's fried chicken drumstick. But that's not what it tastes like. And I know that it's not fried, so of course it's not going to have the buttery, uh, the butter, the buttery crispy outside. Ooh, uh. But they're just, they're hard. They're so gamey. It does, they're red. It's just red. It doesn't taste like turkey, which you don't even want to taste turkey anymore either. I mean, I'm talking about it like it's disgusting, but my mouth is be watering currently. I cannot hold it back. All right, we got to move on to the next subject. We got to move on to the next subject. I don't even know what the subject was. Okay, so um, I don't even know what I was talking about. Tony, how do you do this? And hi! My next subject. Um, I want to talk about this openly because no one will listen to me. All the information is out there. We all know what happened to the submarine. Not submarine, the submersible. I wouldn't have gotten in that. I know plenty of you wouldn't have gotten in it either. They had done four or five successful other trips down, but I was watching, and on one of the more recent trips down, someone did complain about the fiberglass making cracking and popping sounds as the pressure increased on it as they lowered themselves down. Now, the reason I bring this up is to talk about myself some more. That's why Tony loves this podcast, because I've been going on for, what, 20 minutes now, 15 minutes now, and it's nonstop noise about myself. I want all of you to go ask your parents if they would have gotten on that sub on that submersible. Go ask them. You're going to be shocked by some of these answers, and a lot of them now knowing what happened are going to say, no, that would be stupid. Go in, explain it to them. They know as much as those people knew. They didn't have all this extra information that we have now about the remote being bought on Amazon for $30. Go in knowing they've done five adventures. It's gone down. Nothing bad has happened. They've only had to cancel like two or three trips. My dad, let me preface this. My dad, who is a very, very smart man, an engineer. My dad, who is a genius said that he would have gotten on that submersible. He was like, so, there's things that outweigh good and bad in innovation. And the fact that they had already gone down four or five times the outweighs the fact that there was some sort of tackiness to the way it was built. I don't get it. I don't get it. This is how these people think. I'm about self-preservation. I'm not about, I before this thing went down, I was already over. I'm not doing any more um, cruise ships. I'm not getting in the ocean. We don't know what's going on out there anymore. It's pointless. Why do I want to swim around in a pool that a thousand other people have already peed in? Why do I want to share a hot tub, which is basically just a hot bath with all the oils and fucking skin sediment from everybody else? You know what I mean on that boat? And then you're trapped out in the middle of the sea, and we don't know what she's up to. She can, She's violent sometimes. Like, you have to revere the ocean. Let's not try to get to the depths of it. Let's not try to get out there. We don't know what's out there! Huh? We don't need to go to space either! Oh, my God. Anyway, I'm also not doing um, Ferris wheels at carnivals. We're not doing that. Watch too many Twitter videos of those just falling over. Uh, I'm not doing carnivals. Carnival rides, slides. I'm not going to indoor water parks. I do ride a motorcycle. I don't care about that, but I'm in charge of that little piece of machinery. I just think that we all kind of I've got a roller coasters where I'm not doing them anymore. There's been too many accidents. Now that I'm 30, knowing what my friends were doing when they worked at theme parks, like getting high and drinking and running those machines, ain't gonna fucking happen. I'm not putting myself in danger anymore. And I don't think any of you should either. My IBS has been acting up real fucking bad. Like, out of control. When I first noticed that it was coming in, it, it was, uh, or that I had it, 
was well i've always known i've been a little touchy in the stomach area but this is the first time that it's caused full-on stomach cramps and like horrifying pain, back pain and that would have been when i was making tony's costumes for the pageant oh oh my god i hear you no stop clapping so loud at home oh my god yes i did make Tony's performance costumes, and I did make Tony's presentation costume. Uh, the beautiful purple dress, I had nothing to do with that. That gorgeous gown was made by somebody else. Anyway, during that period of time, I think I was super stressed out, and it was causing me a lot of internal damage, and my body was like on fire. My kidneys hurt. I couldn't poop. I didn't poop for two weeks, but once the pageant was over, like three days later, I was 100% totally fine. There was nothing wrong with me. Then I went to New York City, baby. I auditioned for a Broadway play with my voice like this. Ooh, ah! I was in New York and I went to a place that I think if you live in New York or you're visiting New York, you should go to because the food, although very spicy, some of it was super delicious. And it's called Birds of a Feather. And I went, it gave my friend Dustin an ulcer. It was so spicy. Me and Pinche and Greg, their partner, couldn't fucking get off the toilet the next day. I was drinking Pepto-Bismol like a chaser for anything. I would drink water, chase it with Pepto. I would have a bite of something to eat, chase it with Pepto. Like, Anyway, it's so out of control right now. I don't know what it is. I, it's like a constant pain. I really want to go see a doctor in LA. If you guys know a really good doctor, my issue is I'm terrified of doctors. I don't trust them. I'm a person of color, which I know they don't believe us when we say that we're in pain. Uh, when I broke my hip, they didn't give me any pain medicine until after they had given me a full CAT scan because they thought I was just in there trying to get pain medicine. So if you have a gay doctor a doctor who likes people of color, a doctor that um, doesn't care that I'm fat. But let's figure out like how to make my, my insides not hurt so that I can go on a walk or so that I can fucking bend over without going, oh, or so I can, you know, poop fucking normal. <laughs> um, so if you have a doctor that you love to see, I'm all for going to see them. The last two that I saw for this problem, which has now persisted for two months, uh, have told me that it's nothing and that I should just take some diuretics and probiotics. And let me tell you, the CVS probiotic gummies that are $45 a bottle are fucking fixing it! And on that, let's, uh, let's take a little break, huh? <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to the episode. This is a portion of the show that I like to call Dream Time. This is for those special podcast listeners out there who... Ooh, hold on. Let me drink a little bit of water. Let me drink a little bit of water. Hello, and welcome back to the Tony Soto Show, hosted by me. This is a special segment that I like to call Dream Time. Dream Time. Dream Time. <clears throat> this is for all my podcast listeners who like to put this on at night before they go to bed. Who just want to hear a nice little exercise to get them in the mood to go to sleep. So please, put down whatever you're doing and take a moment for yourself as I, Meatball, take you on a guided meditation journey. Ooh. Acha-cha-cha-cha. Acha-cha-cha-cha. Please, close your eyes and get ready to be taken on a journey far, far away to a place not many people know. Are you laying down on your back? Are you getting in touch with your breath? Why don't we take a deep breath in through our nose? 
and blow out one, two, three, four, five, and breathe in and blow out one, two, three, four, five, and breathe in. <gasps> through your nose and blowing out through your mouth. Ah. Oh. Keep your eyes closed even if you're behind the wheel of a car. Ah, yes. Now above you, do you see that? Right in front of your face. It's a little, it's like a little green light floating inches above your eyes. Just floating there. Do you see it? Ooh, oh my gosh, all of a sudden it's it's changing colors. My mine changed to purple. What what color is yours changing to? Oh, interesting. Now, I mean, that color usually means death, but mine's purple. So let's maybe maybe imagine yours is purple. <sighs> keep breathing, keep breathing. Now, only in your mind, from this point on, everything's just in your mind. In your mind, get up and kind of follow this little purple glowing orb. As you see, it's all of a sudden around you, you're just in a dark hallway and all you see is this orb in front of you. And you don't feel feel fear. You're not scared. It's kind of warm and you feel at home. So you follow this little orb and you're walking. But it's nice. It almost feels like you're at home. can breathe as you walk you see a door in front of you and you can see the light kind of peeking in around the corners and it's bright outside and you know it you can kind of feel that the door is it's just warm on the other side you know exactly what to expect so the little purple orb goes and sets itself on the handle so follow it down and why don't you just open the handle to that door and open it up? Oh, wow. And as you open the door, you feel the, the light, the warmth of the sun. It's hitting your face. It's hitting your chest, your bare chest, because you're shirtless, because you're naked. And then you feel the sun gently just touching on your thigh, <laughs> on your thighs. But you're clothed if you want to, if you, <laughs> you're, wearing, you're wearing clothes if you want to. Um, and outside is just, it's taken your eyes a minute to kind of adjust, but then you see that you're just like in the windows backdrop. It's just a big blue sky that seems like it goes on forever. And the hills are just rambling and rolling and they go on forever. And the little purple, the purple orb is, is slowly getting bigger and it's kind of ascending. And it, it reaches out its little orb hand and you grab it and you realize it's kind of fuzzy. And you're like, why is... This, this light energy fuzzy and as your eyes are still adjusting you realize that the purple orb is just it's just grimace and he's and he's like hey have you tried my fucking milkshake at McDonald's and you're like grimace grimace please I was I was so calm it's just so weird that it's you out of all of of, of all the Mc, characters, grimace you're my my spirit animal um 
well, thank you so much. And so you grab Grimace's hand and he's like, I want to show you something. It means so much to me. It's where I found my ultimate peace. It's where I feel that I am who I'm meant to be. But he says it like Grimace. And you say, you go, Grimace. Oh my God, Grimace. This is literally all I've been looking for is peace and a place to just rest my head and feel safe and and warm and alive. Grimace, please, Grimace, take me to this place. And you're crying. You have tears rolling down your face. And he grabs you and he hugs you with his big, warm Grimace body. And you close your eyes and you're just holding him. And you can feel him breathing and he's breathing the same way you should still be breathing. He's breathing in through his nose. And then out, out through his mouth. For five seconds. And, and you pull away and you wipe your tears from your eyes. And you're sitting in a 2015 Ford Focus with leather interiors a backup camera a full display navigation system included brand new brakes got put on like two years ago all all of the brake pads are new brand new gas gauges this car is so safe and warm and you just think Jeez, this is the best I've ever felt. Thank you so much, Grimace. But when you look around, you don't see Grimace. You don't see anything. You're just inside this deluxe 2015 Ford Focus Titanium Flex Fuel Hatchback with a huge enough room in the back if you lay down the back seats you know those big rubbermaid bins you can fit six of those in there there's a lot of space i'm i'm really like kind of upset that i have to get rid of this car because i've had it for so long and it means so much to me but i just need a bigger car it's in great working condition if you want to give me a good offer we could get the ball rolling i'm thinking somewhere around eight thousand but what like we can talk about it um and then uh you got to take that deep breath through your nose you go and then you breathe out one two three four five and your hands are on the leather wheel and you look over and you see grimace and he he too is in a brand new 2015 Ford Focus Titanium Flex Fuel. But he doesn't have a backup camera. And that really makes you cry. So now you're upset in your Ford Focus. And the only thing you can do is just press the gas and hit it. And you can get to 60 in 5.5 seconds highway speed and it does get around 25 to 24 miles a gallon in in los angeles but when you're on the highway 32 it's a wonderful vehicle um listen up thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of tony soto show um please just when you're done with this guided meditation make sure to leave the key in the car it does have an auto start ignition so you can start it from outside the car but I'd like you to leave it inside the car um thank you so much